Hi, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up port profiles in the new Unify Network Controller version 8.0.7. So I thought I'd do this video for you um, so you have the video and knowledge ready to uh, use port profiles, if you so wish, in the new Unify Network Interface. So I'll explain briefly um, about port profiles and also how to configure them in the new Unify Network Controller. So um, as you can see, I'm in the new Unify Network Controller already. And what I've done is clicked on the ports option, which is the four little port symbols from the left hand side menu as you'll see I'm hovering over now. So in this ports screen, you will see that I have selected switch 01 as the device for which is being shown on screen at the moment. So as you'll see here, which I'm hovering over and running along with my mouse mm -hmm. cursor, these are the ports and the port layout at the front of my Unify switch 24 PoE and as you'll see it's got 24 ports and two SFP plus ports. Underneath this you'll see which devices are connected to which port and also you'll see further down below there's also a list of ports and devices in rows. Now I already have some VLANs set up in my network as probably you have too. Um, I know a lot of home users do use VLANs for various things for example putting multimedia devices into their own VLAN, having voice over IP telephones in their own VLAN and also for example smart devices in their own VLAN as well. So what we can do is set up the ports on the switch so that whatever device is plugged into that port it will always be allocated to a particular VLAN and this is what port profiling basically does. So let's take a look in the VLAN screen at the top option which is the menu in the top screen and that's at the middle of the screen you'll see that we have ports insights and vlans so if we select vlans you will see this takes us into the again the list of ports and the layout of what it is on my 24 port switch under native vlan assignment now here you will see there's various numbers in boxes now i have four VLANs set up, well three actually, three additional VLANs I should say. Um, VLAN 1 is actually just the default network um, and as you will see here it says 1 equals default and again we've got the same port layout in that box. Then underneath that we have VLAN 10 which is for automation and again we have the squares which are the ports as laid out on the front of the switch. The same applies to 20 for the security VLAN and 30 for the multimedia VLAN, meaning that the port layout is all shown as it would be if you were looking at the device from the front. Now under native VLAN assignment you will see that there's numbers in each of the ports. Now number one means that all of those ports with number one in are assigned to default. Number 10 are assigned to automation VLAN. Number 30 are assigned to the multimedia VLAN. So you'll see that there's nothing in the security VLAN under the native VLAN assignment. This is because the security network only has Wi-Fi devices connected into that security VLAN so these will not appear on the actual switch port assignment. So what we can do is for example say 
let me give you an example of an office. So as you'll see on screen at the moment, we have a basic floor plan of an office. Now you can see we have office one. So for example, we would put office one, which is for management staff, and that will be put in VLAN two, and the management would be the name of the VLAN. We have finance, which we could put in VLAN one. Management, again, we could tie in with VLAN two. So we have management in office one, management in office three, and management in office four. Then we could have, say, another VLAN with marketing staff, which could be put in VLAN 4. And then we can also have, for example, VLAN 3, which could be the guest network. So obviously in these offices, they would normally have Ethernet ports on the wall. So, for example, when someone were to be working in the finance office, they would be put in VLAN 1. Imagine those ports being on the wall. The staff would plug their devices, PCs, laptops or whatever in that finance room into those corresponding network ports on the wall. Now, what we could do is, for example, if we go back to the Unify. So, for example, what we could do is for the finance department, we could imagine that they have their port numbers on the switch, port one, three, five, and seven. So what we could do is for ports one, three, five, and seven, we would click on one. So this would be port number one. Here you'll see it's taken us into the port screen. So the port layout on this switch is here now. So what we could do for port number one, which is highlighted now in blue with a blue board around it because we've clicked on it in the VLAN section. What we could actually do is tag this port to a particular VLAN. So at the moment, any VLAN or any particular traffic where a device is plugged into port one, it could actually go into any VLAN or use any subnetwork on the office network as a whole. So what we can do is tag the port so that it only allows and only connects devices to a particular VLAN. Whenever a device is plugged into that port in the finance department, it will always be given an IP address and be connected to a particular VLAN. And this is what tagged VLAN is. And this is why we would tag ports to prevent staff from other departments going into that finance department, plugging in their own laptop, for example, and expecting to be put into their own VLAN. Say a marketing person went into the finance department, wanted to use someone else's desk in there because all the desks in the marketing department were used. So the user spare desk in the finance department plug in their laptop and expect to be put into the marketing VLAN so that they could be communicating with all their people in that marketing department. However, because the port has been tagged to the finance department, they wouldn't actually be put into their marketing VLAN. They'd be put into the finance VLAN because that port has been tagged using VLAN to the finance department. So hopefully that explains in simple terms or fairly simple terms what tagged VLAN is and how you can use them to tag ports to different VLANs. So what we're going to do is create some port tagging or VLAN tagging and move these voice over IP telephones into their own VLAN. So what we need to do is click on VLANs at the top screen. Then you will see that port 18 and port 20 are currently in the default network, which is the untagged VLAN network. And what we need to do is move them into VLAN 40, which is the PBX network. So what we're going to do is click on port 18 
we'll do the, just one of them at the moment. Um, I don't need to do both of them. I'll just do one as an example for you. So we're doing port 20 actually. We'll do port 20 and not port 18 because that phone is closest to uh, my screen at the moment. So we're doing port 20. So we've clicked on port 20 which has now highlighted the port with a blue border around the box as you'll see. We'll leave the name as it is as port 20. You could actually rename it to for example telephone one or voice over IP telephone one but we'll leave it as port 20. Then what we'll do is under port we'll select it as active and then for the native VLAN stroke network as you'll see it's selected as the default network at the moment which is the untagged VLAN network which is the main network. So what we're going to do is change it by clicking in the box to pull down the drop down list and then we'll go ahead and select PBX VLAN which is VLAN 40. Then for the tagged VLAN management what this option is is at the moment by default it's selected to allow all. Now what tagged VLAN management is for say for example you have um, another unify switch that you wish to add into your network but you say you wish to put it on a different VLAN say it's in, in your lounge behind the back of the TV and it's connected to all your media equipment so there's a small switch connected to your media equipment now that switch will need to talk to your unify network controller so if you put it in a native VLAN, say for example PBX VLAN 40, it will not be able to communicate with your Unify network controller, which is obviously a requirement for Unify devices. They need to talk back to your network controller. So under tagged VLAN management, what you would do is select custom and then add in a tagged VLAN of default because your Unify controller is on the default network you would need to select default and click save what it would do is put your devices into the native VLAN of PBX40 and then under tagged VLAN management we have the default network in there which still allows it to communicate back to your Unify network controller say for adoption purposes and removal and you can change various settings in that switch via your Unify network controller if you didn't have a VLAN management and you selected block all it wouldn't be able to talk back to your Unify network controller you can obviously select allow all which would then allow everything to talk back to your Unify network controller but what we want to do is select block all so that it blocks all of the VLAN traffic and any other traffic going through the network controller so that it blocks all traffic going through your network other than traffic to the PBX40 VLAN. So hopefully that makes sense. But because these voice over IP telephones are not Unify based and they don't need to talk back to the Unify controller for management purposes that is, we don't need to have a tagged VLAN management setting in there. Um, we don't need to specify any custom settings. So to confirm for native VLAN network we're moving the voice over IP telephones which are not Unify ones, they're not Ubiquiti ones so we're moving them into PBX VLAN which is VLAN 40 tagged VLAN management should be block all so that it blocks all of the VLAN traffic on those voice over IP ports on the switch PoE would be PoE++ because they're PoE++ powered voice over IP telephones so 
under advanced we'll leave that as automatic so we'll click apply changes this should now have moved the voice over ip telephone on port 20 into the pbx vlan so what i'll do now is just reboot the telephone so that voice over ip telephone is rebooting now and once it's rebooted it should pick up a new ip address from vlan 40. as you'll see the device has now disappeared from port 20 on the switch it's no longer showing so now port 20 is just powering itself up and as you'll see the voice over ip telephone has now appeared so we'll give it a moment just to finish rebooting and then we'll check to see that it's picked up a new ip address in the 40 range okay so now the phone has finished rebooting we can now click on voice over ip telephone one in port 20 showing under port 20 not the actual port itself but we're clicking on the device underneath that and this brings the pop-up window up at the right hand side and as you'll see it's now saying that there's a telephone connected to switch port 20 wide experience virtual network is now pbx the vlan id is 40 which is correct and the ip address is 192.168.40.5 so it's now picking up a new ip address in the 40 range which is the pbx vlan range so that is how you apply port tagging to individual ports on your switch or any other ports on your network so you can actually configure more than one port at once and it's quite simple to do all you would do is select multiple ports by clicking on them and as you'll see i've selected four ports and each one has a blue border around the box so once you make changes down below in the settings it will then configure all of those selected ports with the various vlan details so rather than going through each individual port one by one you can actually select and change groups of ports by clicking on them and putting a blue border around just one thing to watch out for when you're selecting ports to have profiles applied to them just make sure that you're not selecting the wrong ports and that if you make more than one change you do deselect the ports that you have already configured or you don't want to configure so just check to make sure the blue borders around the ports are actually correct before you actually apply any changes otherwise it could actually uh, put devices into different networks and probably mess them up so you can't connect to them anymore so just be wary of that i hope you found this video useful if you could hit subscribe button that would be great helps the channel out greatly hopefully i'd like to get to a thousand subscribers before 1st of january 2024 whether that's doable or not is uh, another question but if you like this channel feel free to hit subscribe it is free anyway thanks for watching this video take care and bye for now